Um, right. Thank you very much, everyone. As uh, David said, I'm going to be speaking about how you can bring your third party uh, solutions in um, to bring in those APIs that you've got into that Teams AI story. Um, very quick thing about me. Hello, Solutions Architect Avenard. Been around the community, MVP for about three and a bit years now. Um, member of the Viva Explorers and the Great Happy Princess podcast. Do uh, hit me up on the socials with the links and details there. But that's enough about me because what I want to get excited about today is Teams AI. First had the chance to look at this library. It came through as was talked about as part of the MVP summit before it was made live. And I was like, Ooh, so we've got a nice way of bringing that magic of AI into Teams apps and surfacing that in bots. And I was like, I really like the sounds of this. So I'm going to talk about the kind of problems and where it's going to come in and help with things on there. I'm going to talk about some of the challenges that you face in there and also one of those challenges that I've managed to overcome. And that's really what I'm sharing today. Um, in terms of what is Teams AI? If you think about it, you've got this dev and you want to build that power of Azure OpenAI or the uh, OpenAI APIs as well. And you want to bring those prompts to define kind of how your app responds to different messages. So you can have that chat bot and you can give your bot a bit of style. So you say, I want my bot to be a super cool fin that uh, is just laid back all the time, even when his machine blue screens on a regular basis just stays calm except when he's up on stage and wants to jump off on there. You can define these prompts and let it fill out those style and reply in that very artistic, fabulous way um, on there. But you can also do a bit more with that in terms of how you get it to guide the responses that you get. And uh, one of the things I love is to connect into third party APIs and use that to bring back the data uh, as well. Now, I'm going to do a very quick demo here before I get into the main part of the demo, because I want to talk about how easy with the Teams toolkit that it is to actually um, bring up and get started with this. So I've got a brand new uh, bot here. Uh, I'm in VS Code. Uh, I've got to keep an eye on the chat. So hopefully that's big enough text for everyone. But give me a shout out uh, if you want that any bigger. And I have that Teams toolkit installed. And I can go in, I can create a new app. And from that app, I've got a few options, especially maybe if you're thinking a bit about Copilot, there's those message extensions, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. Um, but more importantly for today, if you bring the bots, there is now, as of the latest version of Teams Toolkit, this AI chat bot. And this makes it even easier. Previously, you could create the bot and there were a few steps, but now you click on this button and you get, I'm not going to run through that uh now, but that will bring you this this up within there. There's a couple of steps you need to do. So you'll need to build out your um, to get your key from your Azure OpenAI instance and put that into the env.local. Now you're thinking, Kev, click on that and then we can all see your key. But I'm not that daft, I hope. So uh, hopefully I won't click on that any minute. But once you set up your keys within there, then you can start working on it. There's a couple of key files here, index.tx um, that sets up all the details. But with this bot now, you don't actually need to touch that one. Everything you need is here within this app.ts. And you can see it sets up your imports, those details from the uh, Teams AI library itself. Um, if you're um, not I do love a good console log. Probably shouldn't do that in a production app, but it's great for these play ones on there. And then you can see it configures your what's called the OpenAI planner. One of the bits that you need to change in here is where you set up your model within your OpenAI. And let me just bring that window uh, where I've got it in the Azure OpenAI Studio. 
You've got your different models that you can set up, whether you've got that GPT-4 or you're still looking at 3.5. And then from there, you can deploy those and give them a name. And it's that name. Uh, let me just make that a little larger for people. It's that name that you want to pull out and use into that details there. And what I love about this playground is that you can go in there and you can have a chat with the uh, bot in here. Um, so you can define your system system message a oops a super cool laid back fin that hates shoes um uh, any advice for speaking at conferences and you can play around to get an idea from the types of different um, items on here so you can see this is what you get back in your bot that comes through so you can start to try out those different prompts that you get through from it and then bring that model across the other bit to note and uh, i've gone blind as to where it is yeah so i've set that up in the azure open AI open ai planner because i'm using azure open ai if you're using open ai and using the the kind of chat gpt models then you've got this other section there so just note these two different things by default it will be set up with this open ai you just need to comment out this line and re-comment that and i love what the team's toolkit's done it's made it a lot easier to get started with those two different versions just to show you what that looks like, um, I'm not going to run the actual thing because I've got my other bot run nicely. But here's the example. <laughs> you can see if you've put the wrong bits into there, um, you can put the different air there. And what I love is it notices that you entered a random set um, of characters in there and comments on that. But once you are working, you can say, what sort of thing can you help with? What books would you recommend on Viva, for example? You can just have that general chat. But that's um, so I can distracted by that chat message about the old farts doing SharePoint. I, I feel particularly targeted on that one. But you can bring this chat through into your bot very, very easily. Just going to hop back over. If you want to bring that personality through here, you can see the basic one is you are an AI assistant. He give this to give more information and power on there. And you're right, Ralph. Yes, you can bypass PVA on this and get a much cheaper alternative. But that's an argument for a different day. Right. Let's come back to the slides a sec. So that's a very quick way and uh, keep an eye. Hopefully David is uh, posting some of the links there on how to get started. Very easy on that to get started, especially with the Teams toolkit um, on there. So some of the challenges that you start to um, some of the things to consider is that that when you take that to Teams toolkit, it will cater for different LLMs. So as I say, you can use OpenAI. You could also use the Hugging Face ones as well. It does have support for OpenAI 4. One thing I would say is that when you create those deployments of your model, make sure you prefix it with GPT dash. There's a tiny little thing in the documentation in the code that mentions that. But if you are if you are lucky enough to have the GPT 4, make sure you reference that to get the full power from it. And I would recommend um, making sure you do that. One of the things, if you've looked at some of the latest, you can now bring your own data into that Azure OpenAI. So you can provide Azure Cognitive Search and that brings citation. At the moment, the Teams AI library doesn't support that. I would love to see more backing um, of there to try and bring that through. I've started looking at building that in, but time uh, hasn't helped in there. So that is something would be really useful that when you bring your own data, that it provides the references to that. So if you wanted to build your own co-pilot for that limited scenario, it would really help with that as well. I know there's some uh, some some of us looking and chatting about how we can better uh, help with that as well. And then finally, one of the, the big issue I found is that I wanted to do that connections to third party and I just couldn't find an easy way to do it. So I, I raised the discussions. I used the right way of engaging with um, the your open source communities and had a chat and found out it was actually supported. 
And actually built into that Teams AI library is support for OAuth. And the second you've got OAuth, you've got that way to connect to all sorts of different systems using your SSO and bringing those things in there. And then there's capabilities, which I'll show in a minute, to make sure that when you when you make certain phrases, that it routes through to that capability. And then using those prompts to make the most of calling those libraries as well. So I'm going to go into a demo, talk about how to configure that OAuth. Uh, I've been desperately trying to write this up properly in a blog and failing miserably uh, on that. But I promise at some point it will. And it is on the library um, that I've mentioned in there. Just keep in half eye. I can see one there about OpenAI being trained on more current information. Yes, it is, but it is still um, within that realm. It won't expand and take on the latest. If you want to pull in latest information from other systems, then you need to find different ways to do that. Okay. Let's jump back now. Um, I actually created this bot from the Teams toolkit, but before the AI one was in there. So whereas previously you saw I was looking at the app.ts, all the same functionality. If I come up to the top here, you can see that same planner uh, and I'm still doing that log of those open AI endpoints and keys. Must keep an eye on that uh, and change those after this. But it shouldn't come up on here. Um, so here you can see that same planner all in that same index within there. And it's got the other configuration. You can even now bring in the moderator uh, onto that. So if you wanted to stop um, someone swearing and ha ha you know talking about the wrong thing, then you can add that moderator uh, built into that to either OpenAI or Azure OpenAI. Where things get different to the others is this block here around authentication. And this is the part that will hopefully take your SSO to the bot, but you define this connection name here, and that's set up in the config, so in the environment variables, and that will use your bot config. So I'm going to jump over if I can find my window. Here you can see that I'm in a resource group. I've got here, if I jump back to the overview, I'm here in a bot service. So when you create your bot in Azure by publishing it, you have this resource in there. By default, uh, and I've got this in the notes on there, it goes to, I think, dev.botframework.com, and you can transfer that over. So even if you're just doing local, you don't have to provision this up. You can take the local version and make that an Azure one. And that's the step you need to do, because within this configuration, and I'm hoping, there we go, within this configuration, you add those OAuth settings down the bottom. And if I click on there, you can define your provider. So obviously, in most cases, it's the Azure Active Directory. You can give it a name. You can give it that ID secret. But you've got other providers here. So one of the samples I'm working on at the moment that I can't see listed there uh, is ServiceNow. But you could connect up to Trello. You can get connect up to Salesforce. This same method will work for anything with OAuth that you can bring it back to. And that name there is what you will put in, whoops, that's what you put in this connection name in the config. And then it will use that configuration for the OAuth to go and connect into there. Now, when you do that, in this case, with the Microsoft 65 community, what's the most used API we have? Obviously, it's the Microsoft Graph. So I've built this sample based on that. And if I jump up here, I've just created in here a graph service. So any of the calls I'm making to the graph call this graph service. And in the constructor, I'm just passing it a token. And this part here that will grab it, and if it's not set, will bring from that auth provider to set the token as a variable here. And then whenever I'm calling the graph client, it set up that token. So if I come back, you can see here when I'm instantiating that graph service to call within this function, I'm just passing this property. And this is a fixed property as part of the Teams AI library to send that auth token. So by setting up this configuration here, setting up that OAuth in the Azure portal, you can then retrieve that token and you can pass it on. And at that point, the world is your oyster.
So to give you an example, you can see here that I've got these actions. So in this case, I've said read mail. And what I want it to do is call the graph service that will go in there, return some mails, return that using the create mail cards, which is just below. I've kind of uh, I've got in my code here where have they gone some adaptive cards. So it look nice, pretty using adaptive cards to IO build out that retrieve the function, load that blah, 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 load that into there and I can render, render those results. And that's a really nice way of doing it. And let's just bring up I'm going to cheat slightly and not do it live right now because I need to uh, make sure that, that that no one emails me with anything under NDA uh, that I get in trouble. But here you can see I've returned those cards as different bits of news on there. Uh, lovely news from Rencor on their blog. Sooner, safer, happier. That's bringing my mails through. Now, would you really want a bot to do that? Probably not, but it gives you an indication. I'm going to try and speed up to make sure I've got lots of other time for other people, because what's more interesting and also you don't always want to put adaptive cards hard coded in there. If I look at the search results, so I've got in here another query search for files about Viva. And again, I've got an adaptive card. But if I go back to where this is, let me just scroll down a bit. You can see I did have that hard coded. But now I'm actually chaining together. So I'm calling summarize search, which is another prompt on there. Uh, make sure I get the right one. There it is. I think it's that one. And you can see if I hide there, return the JSON for an adaptive card with a carousel. I have not hard coded any adaptive card in there. I've asked the Azure OpenAI to return the adaptive card from these and here is another function. If I go back to index, just below that is search files for the query. I can pull the conversation out. And here you can see I'm pulling that search query that has been defined in the line above. I'm calling my graph service to bring back that query and load that result. So effectively, my uh, Sorry, this one, the prompt is loading those results in there and that becomes my prompt. And the reason I'm showing that is because you can build this prompt up in that playground to get those results. Mm -hmm. So I haven't hard coded any uh, adaptive card. It's pulling that automatically from Azure OpenAI. And this is really what I'd love you all to think about with your prompts is taking a bit in a different way. Another example here is I've taken the results from my calendar. Hey, Kevin, just, just one real weeks. quick. Sorry to interrupt, just we're, we're almost into the next demo time. So if we could just wrap it up real quick. I will rush Sorry through very quickly, absolutely. Um, on there, um, this is taking the kind of looking at the well being and productivity. And if I just very quickly go back to that, apologies to uh, I think April, who's next. You can see here it's looking that like I've got quite a busy calendar with back to back meetings. It's essential to have breaks. It's taking those results and bringing them back as a nice, easy, engaging way. So it's not just about putting things in cards. It's about bringing these text based ways through to show for other people. Um, if you do have questions, uh, there's a few links for people. The sample that I've got, I think David's put into the chat there as well. I would definitely recommend looking at some of the semantic kernel. And also Gary Trin has been doing some lovely work in an alternative way instead of Teams AI about using a different um, framework called Langchain. So well worth taking a look at that. But awesome. otherwise, I will finish up and hand over there. Mm -hmm.